Good morning and welcome to worship at YZ Community Church. My name is Rustin Comer and I'm a part of the pastoral team. Let me be one of the first to say to you, Happy Mother's Day. We know this holiday can hold memories of great beauty and also pain and sadness. So this morning, we want to acknowledge all women in our lives who have offered us their love and their friendship and their compassion and their hope in all forms of mothering. This morning, we will also finish our series in the book of Philippians called A Turn to Joy. This short letter from Paul was written from jail and offers some inspiring motivation to the church to find joy in the midst of all the parts of our life. Today we'll hear beautiful words of good news and hope from the fourth chapter. If you're on our website, you'll see three buttons below this window. First, for visitors, a hello button to let us know that you joined and how you would prefer to connect with us. Secondly, for everyone, there's a prayer request button we want to know any specific needs or concerns that you may have, and we would love to help meet you where you are in this moment. And third, there's a Give button that allows you to support what God is doing through the mission and ministries of WCC. Or you can simply type wccgive.org into your browser. If you're joining us on Facebook or viewing after the live event, simply go to wyzettacommunitychurch.org where you'll find all the same options to connect with us digitally. If you haven't already done so, get to a quiet and comfortable spot, wherever you are. And if it's possible, light a candle to acknowledge the presence of the Spirit. If you're blessed by the presence of someone else in your home, please turn to them with a smile and let us worship God together. So join us now as we worship. Today, as we begin worship and prepare our hearts, we give thanks to God for the gift of mothers and the mother-like nature that many people show to others in their lives. Isaiah wrote that God is a mother to us, comforting and carrying us in her arms. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, Isaiah 66, 13. Loving God, thank you for your tender care and the women in our life who emulate you. Isaiah also wrote that God would never forget us. She knows each of us like a mother knows her own children. Can a mother forget her baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Isaiah 49, 15. Loving God, thank you for your tender care and the women in our life who emulate you. David wrote that in God's presence, he was quiet and at peace, trusting his mother God like a child safe in loving arms. But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul with you. Psalm 131, 2. Loving God, thank you for your tender care and the women in our life who emulate you. Jesus spoke of himself as a mother longing to wrap his arms around us like a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Matthew 23, 37. Loving God, thank you for your tender care and the women in our life who emulate you. Paul writes about his missionary ministry and likens his work to that of a nurse who looks after those in her care. But we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. 1 Thessalonians 2.7 Loving God, thank you for your tender care and for the women in our life who emulate you. We gather together in worship, our loving, nurturing God who like a mother knows us intimately, loves us unconditionally, and teaches us the way we should go and comforts us in our times of need. Welcome to worship.
Our Turn to Joy series, based on Paul's letter to the Philippians, concludes with a passage from his fourth and final chapter. These words have become ubiquitous in Christian homes, in worship hymns, and other times and places where encouragement is needed. As usual, Paul packs a lot of words into a few short passages. So listen now with open hearts and open ears. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. In some ways, Mother's Day is the perfect time to put an exclamation mark on our Turn to Joy series. Motherhood is an amazing example of a happiness that doesn't depend on what happens. Let's face it, no parent ever knows exactly what's going to happen with their children. In other ways, Mother's Day is a terrible time to talk about joy because for so many women, motherhood is more a question mark than an exclamation mark or even an unfinished sentence ending only with an ellipsis, a, a dot, dot, dot of grief or disappointment. Turning to joy seems an impossibility precisely because of something that happened or didn't happen. So however it is that you come to this day, please know this. Our series on joy is not intended to just blow sunshine into a truly cloudy day, but instead to tap into the source of joy and the strength that accompanies it through the heart and mind and soul of a faithful, but not perfect, follower of Jesus named Paul. Paul wrote these words in a letter from jail to a church that he loved very much. He wrote, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let us pray. Speak to us, O God, as a gift of your spirit. Speak to us. Your church is listening. Amen. Our series on joy began with the question of whether it was too soon in the midst of a global pandemic to turn to joy. But for each of us, there is a different reality in which we see that opportunity is nowhere or opportunity is now here. In the context of an opportunity, we started by embracing a simple three-step Benedictine practice, stop, look, and go. In our second week, we remembered the provocative phrase that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. So we took a close look at the mind of Christ and learned that a joyful mindset is one of humility and service. Last week, Paul urged us to press on, as what we thought might be a sprint was clearly becoming a marathon in this coronavirus, but inviting us to use this stay-at-home time to make two lists according to David Brooks' resume virtues versus eulogy virtues. Now today we conclude by understanding the context into which Paul was writing his letter to the Philippians. Remember, Paul wasn't writing just because he was happy and wanted them to be happy. He was in jail. Joy has nothing to do with being happy. Paul wrote an entire letter about joy because their joy in Philippi was being threatened by two forces at work, two different schools of thought within the same community. One was legalism and the other was libertinism. 
Now, legalism was the approach to faith that put adherence to religious law above all else. This sort of faith was built on a formula that depended on a person's ability to be good or to follow certain laws. These were early Christians, but like some still today, they believed that their salvation was something that they had to earn. Legalism, as you could expect, led mostly to feelings of guilt and shame and frustration. Not much joy there. On the other hand, libertinism was the other approach. An approach to faith that says anything goes. It's the idea that under the blanket of God's grace, we can do anything we want. It was, after all, the same Paul who said that all things are permissible. It leads to the kind of thinking that says, I can just follow my own selfish pursuits and that's okay. But in that same sentence, Paul also said, but not all things are helpful. A libertinistic approach to life and faith leads to emptiness, shallow living, and in the end makes no difference in anyone else's life. Not much joy there either. What Paul suggests in his closing words to the church in Philippi is a third way. In short, it is the way of joy that leads to peace. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, and that will be with us always. This special brand of peace, like God's special brand of joy, comes not by our own efforts to earn it, like legalism, nor by a frivolous life led for one's own purposes only, like libertinism. According to Paul, it's a peace that comes when the joy we know is, is countercultural, when it's a byproduct of a life with purpose, and when it is ultimately shared with the world. Let's take each of those very briefly and one at a time. Peace is experienced through joy that is countercultural, a byproduct, and is shared. Reflecting on Mother's Day this year, Sheila and I remembered a movie that we watched over and over again in our early years, uh, long before children. A movie called She's Having a Baby, starring Elizabeth McGovern and who else? Kevin Bacon. Like us, the couple in the movie were making their way through engagement, marriage, uh, careers, and then starting a family through a high-risk pregnancy. There's a scene when Kevin Bacon's character is wondering whether marriage and children will make him happy. His friend says to him in a poignant moment, yeah, you'll be happy, you just won't know it. What a profound commentary that is on our culture. Why wouldn't he know he's happy with things like a life partner and children well, it's because our culture tells us that things like money, materialism, goods, and power, and position, those are the things that will make us happy. We're inundated by messages that reinforce the notion that until we have the right car, or the right clothes, or the right carpet, or whatever, we won't be happy. Look, if we can't know joy in the simple, purest of things like family and friends, we're never going to know it in what the culture offers us. This third way of peace comes in joy that is countercultural. Secondly, this peace that surpasses understanding comes from joy that is discovered as a byproduct of living a life with purpose, a life with meaning. To pursue joy directly is like chasing a butterfly. Try as you might, even with a net, the best way to catch a butterfly is to simply stand still and let it come to rest on your shoulder or on your arm. Another movie we've dusted off during these stay-at-home days and forced our kids to watch is one of my top five favorites, The Shawshank Redemption. Andy Dufresne, played by Tim Robbins, has been unjustly sentenced for life for a murder that he didn't commit. 
Over years of peaceful living in unimaginable conditions, he earns the trust of the warden and access to his office and to the loudspeaker PA of the entire prison. In an opportunistic moment, in the midst of just doing the things he had to do to survive, Andy locks himself into the warden's office and plays the stunningly beautiful song Duettino Solaria from The Marriage of Figaro over the loudspeaker for the whole prison to hear. And for just one incendiary moment, reclining in the warden's chair with his dusty prison-issued boots up on the desk, Andy knows peace through a joy that came as a byproduct of living life with purpose. Peace comes from joy that is countercultural, a byproduct of a life lived with purpose, and lastly, that is shared with the world. Paul is in isolation, remember, he's in jail, but he's writing to a community of believers who live in close proximity within the context of a larger world. The command to rejoice is in the plural, Joy is incomplete unless it is shared. It's a sign of the presence of the living Christ, which Paul says in verse 5 is near, the same Christ we celebrated on Easter. In the sharing of joy, rejoicing collectively, there comes a peace that has the potential to inspire the world. On a trip to Scotland with my brother several years ago, we visited the Edinburgh Castle, an ancient fortified castle atop the highest hill in the whole city. At the very end of the Royal Mile, it's an impressive place with thousands of visitors every day. As my brother and I stood at the very top of the castle, looking down onto the courtyard of the castle itself and all of Edinburgh lined out behind it, the crowd began to stir and there was a buzz in the air. The whole atmosphere of the place changed in an instant. A military band marched through the gates and three enormous cannons blasted over and over again. And just then, we saw the Royal Arms of Scotland flag that signifies the presence of the Queen in the city being hoisted up the flagpole. If this peace that surpasses all understanding is to be shared with the world, it's up to us to run the flag of love and grace and joy up the flagpole of our lives for all to see. I've heard it said that our cup of joy is only as deep as our cup of suffering. If this is true, it's just one more reason to bear and to share the burden of both our sufferings and our joys. Friends, legalism wasn't bringing joy to Philippi. Libertinism wasn't getting it done either. But Paul showed them a third way, the way of peace. This peace comes as an experience of joy that is countercultural. So let me ask you, in what ways do you need to turn your back on the world to face your Creator? It comes as a byproduct of a life with purpose. So let me ask you, what are you chasing right now that might not wor be worth catching anyway? And finally, this joy is one we are called to share with the world. In what ways can you fly the flag of joy over your life? As you turn to joy, may you be blessed by whatever is true whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, and whatever is commendable, that you might keep on doing these things, that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Rejoice, ye shining worlds on high. Reward the King of glory nigh. Who can this King of glory be? The mighty Lord.
Let's turn our hearts to prayer. Mother God, we are thankful for all women this day. We pray for women who are pregnant, for those who are waiting with joyful expectation, and for those who are filled with uncertainty and fear. Give each one peace in these days. We pray for women and men who long to be parents, but who struggle with infertility May the Holy Spirit intercede on their behalf, carrying their concerns to you, O oh God. We pray for women who are mothers of every kind, by birth, through adoption, or those mother figures we choose as mentors and guides. We give thanks for each one, for their caring, their shepherding, their kindness, their watchful eyes, and their loving hearts. Thank you, God, for all the mothers we have been blessed with. Mothers we have chosen, or mothers who have chosen to care for us. We pray too, O oh God, for mothers who have not been able to live up to the task, for those who have walked away, for those who have broken hearts, or for those who have been hurtful to their children. Heal those children, we pray, and heal those mothers, we pray. We pray for women who have lost children, O oh God. Surround them with your love. Comfort them with your everlasting presence, O Holy Spirit, and bring them peace. And we pray for the mothers that we have lost. We give thanks for the places they have held in our lives and for the light they continue to shine in our hearts. Thank you, God, for mothers. We are grateful for all the women who have stepped up to care for us, who have selflessly served us, who have provided for us emotionally, physically, financially, and spiritually. We're grateful, O oh God, for their loving care on this Mother's Day and every day. And we thank you too, God, for the ways that you mother us daily by gathering us in, by listening to us, responding to us, and redeeming us. And we join our voices now in the prayer your own son taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, moms, today is your day. It's a day to say thank you for loving us, caring for us, and guiding us. It's a day to recognize all you do and all you are to us, your perfect, wonderful, amazing children. Thanks for all the early mornings and for taking care of the things we take for granted. Thanks for never giving up on us, even when we stress you out. Thanks for making sure we have what we need and for giving us your heart even when you're sick and tired. Thanks for working hard even when we're a handful and for loving us unconditionally when our attitude is anything but lovable. You're our everything, Mom, and we'd be a mess without you. Today, we thank God for the wonderful gift of you. Happy Mother's Day.
We are so glad you could join us for this online worship experience. We hope and pray that this joy series has helped you turn to joy. It remains our high priority to be a non-anxious, caring presence for all. So if for any reason turning to joy feels impossible to you in this moment, I want you to call the church today or go to our website and make a prayer request that we might come alongside you in ways that are helpful to you. Now, next Sunday, we will be commissioning our first class of fully trained and equipped caring community ministers, also known as CCMs. They will be joining us clergy in caring for you and for our whole community. Now, if you don't have a church home and want to learn more about what God is up to here at Wyzetta Community Church, then visit our website, wyzettacommunitychurch.org, and look for the word hello in all bright letters. But for now, go into this new day, refreshed by God, renewed by the Holy Spirit, and encouraged by the love of Christ. And don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold, but let God remake you from within with joy. For what does the Lord require of us but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God?